how not to put up one of these tents. <laughs> I escaped the garden again. On my video on greenwashing, I talked about reuse and recycle and secondhand, and so I thought I'd do what I say, show, not tell, and sell my old gear on eBay and passing it on to a next generation. But thought in the meantime, before I do that, I'd do an evolution video of where my gear was. 10, 15 years ago, or to about fairly recently, um, as a contrast to where I am now, and show you that you can actually have good gear second hand, and it's not necessarily about the new thing, although some of these are not very ultra light. So, this is my original backpack the OA Open Arms backpack. Military gear is a good way of saving money, um, and apologies. The sound quality of this video, I forgot my mic, I actually packed it in my other rucksack and then when I changed rucksacks to the new, well the old rucksack, the other rucksack is I've got is a Kelty Coyote 80 and it is a great rucksack and it's a little bit heavy, it's not ultra light but compared to this it's a world away but don't let that put you off, I mean this, this rucksack is slightly too short for me. I didn't understand the concept of things like uh, torso. You you have different sizes for a backpack that sort of sort of short, medium, or long according to where your where your torso is. So it is important to know about that, and I didn't. So this is actually too short for me. I was using it for like walking, like maybe half a mile with this, maybe a bit longer today, and the same old aches and the same old things happened I was like yeah it's so important to have a pack that fits you but if you get one of the Bergens or one of these and this is 100 litres so you've got these side pockets which are detachable and um, the Bergens are probably a little bit better than that because they tend to they tend to be a bit closer to say a Berghaus or something like that but if this is all you've got and it fits you probably better and it hasn't got like mangled straps because unfortunately airports absolutely hate they just wreck the straps so um sadly so i've lost the the buckle on the hip strap but it doesn't really fit me it's, it rides too high anyway so it's amazing how much space you've got and each of these packs can be used as a day pack um i think i've got the straps in here i've got the straps as well so what happens is you've got the you can attach the strap to this and it becomes a day pack which is really useful and, and the day packs you get on modern rucksacks or you know backpacks are useless they're like tiny where you can actually get a lot into, into one of these we've got my coleman tent which i'll show you and hopefully erect unless someone has a go at me later this is um my first tent which was the coleman weekend three and I used to use it mostly for festivals, but I did go camping with this in Scotland, uh, in Skye, although it was mid season, so I actually ended up in youth hostels. So I looked this around, I didn't use it so much, but I have used it on, you know, in anger and on, on camps and hikes. I thought, oh, I need something a bit lighter. So I got the Highlander Dura 2 Ranger, which was. You know, for the time, I think it's about, I think it's like 1.5 kilograms or something like that. I can't remember. Uh, with, oh, one 500 millimeter hydrostatic head. Ooh, exciting. It's a single hoop tent and it's quite easy to put up. And I felt that the three man was just, it was good for like you know, a couple of people going to a festival or, you know, roomy. But for walking, I thought to get this. But this is this is before ultralight. This is my original carry more bag, sleeping bag. Uh, it's one uh, 
1.5 kilograms synthetic three season and it's the caramel hibernate three and I, that's a one season bag really it's um i'm not sure i can sell this I might do i'd have to warn people that it's not really you know it's 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 all right maybe for the kids in the backyard or or for a summer night but anything you know that's warm any other time you should just get a bit cold in that if it reaches anything close to 10 degrees let alone zero i mean it says comfort rating 5c that is absolute crap but anyway and these are my original i used to i used to carry either enamel plates thinking i could put them on the you know cook with them which you can but uh, you can see that I very rarely use that. I actually more often use the, a plastic plate and a plastic cup, which compared to something like this, which is just uh, rather bent now, and somehow it got bent in the... Not sure I got that right, but anyway. So, yeah. And this is the extra R-value picnic blanket. And, yeah, it's aluminium on both sides. It hasn't got very much thing, but it works sort of a... A simple footprint. Don't know how long it will last, but it does make a difference underneath the tent. So yeah, there's the caramel bag, and there's the Highlander Duro, and the Coleman. The Coleman is so big it doesn't fit in the OA bag. I used to strap it on the sort of the top or the bottom. And compared to something like the Lanshan, this is just. Uh, a world away <laughs> from that and then you can see the difference between some like the MSR and this was my original gas stove um, you can still get these these are the camping gas I can't remember the name of them but they are they're still made they still they still work they're really I mean the difference in light though between the MSR pocket rocket and that but some of that is bomb proof the only downside obviously is that it uses the camping gas proprietary connector which is fine if you're in france or europe not so great in other parts of the world but harder to find but you can get adapters for these to fit the camping gas i think i suspect you can get adapters to do the reverse although yeah you've got uh, you have even more weight penalty but these are you know are very reliable and you can say the wider head which means that they're better for cooking but you know a lot heavier a lot bulkier um, but nothing wrong with these anyone says that you shouldn't use them you know I mean they're not ultra light but they work and here you can see the sort of evolution from the Uruk you know, recent Aracasso to the enamel uh, to the sort of the more plasticky stuff which I'd kind of avoid nowadays with a planet and of course everyone was saying to, to me to get a stainless steel pot well I've already got one I'd forgotten I got on this you can see it's not I don't think it's ever been used uh, I'd stopped carrying it because it was a bit a bit large and heavy but um, I need to check how much it is whether it's one litre or could even be one and a half or two it's a bit massive but that would be good for you know if you're cooking for more than one person it's a bit heavy for two it's not massively heavier than the aluminium. Titanium's lighter, but it's not like, wow, oh my god, it's so heavy. You know, it's... You know, we're talking grams here. I'm going to try and put, put them up in a minute. Um, hopefully no one will have a go at me, because I'm in Ham Common. Um, but I'm not staying here. Oh, and this is the cup I used to use. I mean, something like the Oracasa or the Sea to Summit is... You know, more the less bulky and lighter than this. But this old stuff is fine and cheap. And yeah, I know plastic, but you know, it's hard to avoid unless you get those wooden cups. The beauty of something like this is you can pick that up from a supermarket. So it's not, you know, it's it's not kind of like specialist camping hiking gear with that premium. So that's that's the good thing about those. So let's try and put the tent up.
So there we are. It's it's finally up, oh, although I've not done all the tie out points because we're running out of light. And hopefully you can see me <laughs> and hear me. But yes, I I was forgot how much of a faff it is to do the hoop thing with those um carbon fiber poles. How much it's just difficult to actually get it through the socket. I'd forgotten that. And also of course I'd forgotten to put the inner in first. So let's have a look. Let's let's see how it's 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 been in storage for maybe ten years. So I'm not really sure what condition this is in. Um, I'm not sure how much I used it in anger. I think I didn't use it. Oh, so it's got a little mesh side window. I'm probably not actually getting into the right bit. And yeah, so there's, there's the inside. I will get in. There's a danger someone will run in and probably steal all my stuff. Right, and I, I'm I'm pretty sure this is supposed to be anchored down somewhere. I could have read the instructions. It's all these things where I had completely forgotten how to how to set this tent up. So yeah, it's not too bad for modern, by even by modern standards of the sort of cheap Chinese tents you get this is pretty good um, well obviously it fits me I'm six foot so it fits me fairly well and it's a bit more a bit more headroom than you get in the lunch um, but yeah it's still actually I am pushing the edges of the thing although it could be that I've not set up the inner correctly I must have used it because there is there's, there's dirt in the, on the mesh, but um, yeah. No, this is a, a very usable tent, and I suspect probably a bit more usable in a storm, even though, as I say, my. It's, yeah, doesn't fit me very well. <laughs> I mean, I got it green for that, because this is how long ago I planned to do stealth things but never did. That's the reason why I got the green, because the idea was to, have, was to go walking with this tent. It's not bad. I would say it should suit someone a little bit shorter than me, because I'm literally, as I say, I'm, I, I might have, a probably, probably not, there's probably some kind of connection points at the ends which I've missed. Uh, I'm not sure about that. As I say, I screwed up the inner, but yeah, if I'm lying here, I'm right at the edges. But then again, it's it's an inner part of the tent. Uh, the outer is, you know, it's a double wall, so um, it's less of a problem. Anyway, let's try the tent before it goes dark. How not to put up one of these tents? <laughs> uh, I forgot to tie. There are little ties on the inner. Uh, I thought it was just the top, and the little side ones. Um, I've forgotten how much of a faff putting up this tent was. <laughs> this has got the cross construction with the two um, two poles crossing each other. But then weirdly, you kind of would expect, like the Highlander, that the, these poles would be attached to the outer. But in this tent, you have to put the inner up first, which is not good for great bad weather. You then tie the outer onto it and then tension it. And 
only way I had to tie it at the top, so I had to tie it to the side, and I'm not going to do it now, and it's, 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 it's a struggle to get it to even fit a bit. Um, so yes, this is how not to put up a Coleman weekend 310. Do not do this at home. Let's have a look. At my terrible handiwork. I think this is, I'm not sure how much this weighs. I think it's a couple of kilograms. I think about 2.5. Um, but you can see from inside, it's a very, very roomy tent. So yeah, it's a pretty roomy tent. You can get two people in here easily with all your gear. And I have done so, uh, mostly for festivals, but hence all the mud. It's a pretty dirty tent. I don't really have time to do that today. But yeah, it's, it's made of that, the outer, the inner is fine mesh. I hear to remember it's quite a warm tent, although that made it not so great for festivals, but um, I did take this up into the, um, I'm not sure if I had the Highlander or this one for when I did the Scottish trips, but, um, and I'm not sure actually the right to roam was there then. I was camping at campsites, but I think it was this one. And I last used it, uh, oh, a few years ago, uh, camping, it got rather cold in May, attending the May Day. Um, thing at Hyden's Ball. I think that's the last time I used this tent. But it, it's got, it, it's made of that sort of plasticized rubberized stuff which seems to have survived. I was worried when I was getting it out. I was like, uh oh, uh oh. Because that stuff, unlike the more modern things, that stuff couldn't uh, degrade over time, the rubberized sort of fabric. But it doesn't seem to have. Uh, amazingly, in pretty good nick for something that's been. Uh, put away for well, at least five years. Highlander has been put away for, been used for at least ten years, so not bad. This is not ultralight at all, but it depends what you're doing. I mean, at this time I wasn't doing ultralight, I was doing some hiking, but I was taking tins. I, I had in that big army rucksack, I had tins of food. I was carrying so much weight. And, and what I'd usually do is just sort of go from campsite to campsite. Not really proper hiking, but kind of sort of camp, some camping, some hiking, but usually base camp hiking, as they call it, where you, you camp somewhere and then you stay there for a few days and then you do your hikes around that area. That's what I used to do until fairly recently, uh, until I, I stopped being able to afford the campsites. But actually, no, in Scotland, I'm not sure back then if it was, if it was her right to roam with law then, because we're talking a long time ago. We're talking um, mid-2000s uh, and 90s, the 1990s before that. So I'm not sure. You know, it'll be a lot easier now and you can camp anywhere, or not exactly anywhere, but in most places, the right to roam. Unlike you, England, and I don't know if someone's going to have a go at me for putting the up, but it's only for this film, um, and it's going to go down... Uh, very shortly, hopefully before it gets dark. Let's see what you think of the tent. So here's the inner and the mesh. I mean, Coleman do make good tents. This is a very durable tent. Uh, whether it's, you know, whether it's it's ultralight, no, not at all. But it was, you know, it's the kind of durable tent that will be fine for, you know, many years. So I had my doubts about my Lanshan surviving as long as this. But, you know, you never know. Very crinkly, very crinkly tent. That is mud. <laughs> Uh, how not to put up a tent. Yeah, that should really run along this line, and I should have attached it there. But, you know. I haven't put this tent up in, oh, at least five to seven years. And Highlander, even last time I was surprised I managed to get the Highlander app 
So, anyway, that's my old gear. And as I say, I might, I don't know whether it worked. Maybe this tent will scrub up well. So I don't know whether I'll sell it or what I'm going to do. It'd be nice to pass this on to somebody who's uh, just starting or maybe just starting to camp. Because this is the kind of tent that would be good for, you know, a couple of people camping. Um, it's not so great for, obviously, hardcore hiking. I mean, something like the, as I've pulled it down now, the Highlander would be better. I pulled it down because I was like, hmm, you know, if I put up, if I don't want to leave the tent and have people come up and go, eh, you can't come here, uh, even though it's common land, um, there's always a danger that someone's going to have a goo. The goo. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, like and subscribe, which I should say at the start, and I always forget to do that. Um, I'm a bad YouTuber. I hope you find this useful, and that you, know, you can see the evolution of of the gear I've got, and that you know I didn't start out with all this fancy gear. Uh, although it's, it's obviously of a budget level, I started out with stuff like this, and you know there's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with the common tents. They're very sturdy. There's wrong with Highlander tents. Um, Highlander's still going. Coleman's still going. Highlander are more aimed at, I think, the campsite, um, you know, the base camping market rather than the hiking market. Highlander is a mix of the two. But, you know, these are the kind of tents you will get secondhand on eBay. And, you know, they're pretty dependable. And... They've served me well for many decades, but I, I must say, I am glad. I am very, very glad that I've got my latch end because I just cannot cope with those poles, the way the poles work. Um, it, it's just, I find it so stressful to to have the, the poles and, and the... I have to say, one of the things I really didn't like about this tent and the Coleman is trying to get the pole out again. I mean, it's tricky enough to get the pole in, but when you're trying to push, um, of course you can't pull it because the little bits come off. So it's kind of like you have to concertina it out. It's it's a real it's a real faff. But I have to say, these kind of tents, you know, it, this is the reason why I'm not sure if I'm going to sell the Highlander. I might do or might not because. It, it, yeah, it's a bit small. Yeah, it's a bit of a faff to put up. But in heavy weather, though, 1500 millimeter hydrostatic head is like, uh, um, but in heavy weather, in a high wind, if that is, you know, the, the ridge line is facing into the winds, you'll find that is a much more storm reliable tent. Than, uh, than probably the Lanchan, although a Lanchan's pretty good. Because I've been in Augustine 2030 in the uh, in the Lanchan and a headland on the Lanchan 1 and the Lanchan 2, there was a squall and a thunderstorm and that was going up to 20 odd miles an hour. And yeah, it slightly collapsed because I, I hadn't actually set it up for that kind of weather, but it didn't rip and I don't think it would. But anything pretty hardcore stormy, I think I would go for, for a, something like a hoop tent or a you know, uh, one more traditional tent because they tend to be a bit tried and tested in the storms. But then again, trekking pole tents are pretty solid as well. The poles are much more solid than these. They're less likely to break. They're more likely to have a, have a collapse in the night uh, as things get pushed over. There are ways of tying them in and and uh, tightening and stuff to deal with that. So it's not, it's the people, you know, I've seen videos where people are like, oh, Lanchan's are terrible in well, bad weather, but they said they'd set it up really badly. And, you know, you have to know how to tension a tent and tension that tent and how to adjust it and lower it down and do various things to make it better for bad weather. Is it a Hilleberg or is it a... You know, some of the more traditional tents, like, like you know, Coleman, I'm sure could probably stand some pretty hardcore, or well, maybe not, I don't, I don't know how waterproof it is uh, nowadays after all those years, but um, I'm sure it could withstand quite a few, you know, a lot of wind and things like that. So, um, yeah. So that's where the things like the Cloud Peak, I've not tried the Cloud Peak, and the more traditional hoop designs probably win out, um, but they're heavier. 
and also there's never a total guarantee you're going to stay dry or the tender might collapse in weather anyway or something will snap or break or whatever so uh, you can never totally um, count for that uh, even in the most poshest of tents so it's more about being prepared and taking your tape and taking you know your, your repair tape and taking stuff that will will last you well so i hope you enjoyed this i'll speak to you soon